this is Tim Sheldon with Timmons Group. I'd like to talk to you about a single roads and highways edit function today. So let's jump right into it. If you see, I've got my roads and highways toolbar here. Uh, this is running on RTS version 10.6.1. Just for reference, uh, I'll pull the toolbar off here so it's easier to see exactly what's going on. So what I want to talk to you about is the create route tool. So this is uh, one of the most basic tools in, in the, the roads and highways tool set here. I often refer to these as granular edits, if you will. And so you can combine create route, extend route, retire, realign, reassign, and reverse. Uh, you can combine all those together in, in different orders as needed to accomplish what I would call a complex LRS edit. So today I just want to break it down to one of its most simple parts and talk about create route. So with roads and highways, every route is based on some sort of centerline geometry. So um, I like to tell people, think of it as the centerline is always the basis of your geometry. And centerline is really the only thing that you as a user owns directly in roads and highways. So what I mean by that is, is you edit the centerline, um, you don't ever edit the routes. You edit the centerline and then the software edits the routes. Or you edit the centerline and tell the software to create a route based on that centerline or however many centerlines you choose. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. I always enable snapping. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use edge snapping. Uh, and we're just going to draw a really goofy shaped road that would get you fired from, from any DOT across the country. So at this point, that's still just dumb geometry. That's a centerline feature living in the centerline feature class in my geodatabase. So once I have that, I need to tell roads and highways to make it into a route. So to do that, I need to choose it. Not to be confused with select, this is a specific roads and highways edit function called choose center lines. So we'll choose the center line segment. And then once we've chosen it, we have to tell roads and highways what we want to do. And again, in this, in this uh, video, we're going to create a route. Um, you'll notice this is in uh, this, this dialogue that pops up has something in common with every other dialogue you'll see uh, in roads and highways in that it, it's very temporally sensitive. So the first thing it's going to ask for every time is what's the effective date or the start date of this edit. Um, so a nice little shortcut, you can double click here to pick today's date, depending on how you model temporality in your database, or you can choose the actual effective date of that route in the LRS. I'll leave the retire date blank, because if I fill in a retire date, uh, then I'm basically creating a feature that doesn't exist past that point in time. You know, there are business cases for that, but more often than not, you're gonna create a route that's uh, going to be active um, otherwise known, you know, by not having a retire date. The next thing I want to do is fill in a route ID. Uh, so I'll use the multi-field route ID input box. And if you watch across the top here, the tool will build out the, um, the numeric route ID as I choose from these domain driven drop downs. So we're going to call this a non-system route. It'll be a normal route qualifier in the inventory direction. I'll carefully choose a number by banging on the keyboard. And then we're going to put this in Buncombe County. So you can see as I fill out these five fields, five constituent fields of the route ID, it builds the whole route ID for me here. So if you're a person who likes to see it spelled out, you can kind of watch it happen as you, as you choose these options. So once we go through that, you'll see that information that I populated in the multi-field route ID input is shown here. There's some additional fields here. So basically these are other fields that exist in, in the route table, um, but aren't part of the route ID. I could fill these in now if I want, or I can leave them blank. For this demo, I'm just going to leave them blank. So I'm going to click OK. And what's going to happen now is Roads and Highways is going to go away and think about the, the information that I've given it. Basically, it's going to use the, um, the geometric length of the centerline feature that I created to build two calibration points. There'll be a calibration point at the beginning of the route and a calibration point at the end of the route. And using those two calibration point measures, the software will extrapolate all the measures in between. So when we're, when we're all done here, we can click anywhere along our route and see what measure we are, we are located at. So there's no work to do with events on this route because it's brand new. So normally this dialogue will go into also processing event behaviors. We'll get to that in another video. So there we go. So a new route is created. So we can check a couple of things about it. We can use the identify LRS route locations tool. This is kind of like your regular find tool, except built specifically for LRS. So what this will do is uh, anywhere I click on the route, it will give me the measure at the location I clicked. 
it will give me the max measure, the minimum measure, and it will give me the effective date of the route. Um, so that may be a little bit different than you're used to with the regular identify route locations tool. Anyway, so if we click here, we can see it gave me the route ID. This is the exact measure where I clicked, the minimum of the route and the maximum of the route. If this is not enough decimal precision, you can change this display in editing options. If you want to bump that out to six, uh, I think a lot of DOTs are running at six, so we can change that. And then when we click again, we'll see these go out to the full six decimal places of precision in the database. So this is a great way to confirm which way uh, the route is measured. Um, you'll notice it matches the digitization direction of my center line, which is the business practice that I chose to use to create this feature. So that was creating a route based on center line I drew, but any way that, that you can get data into the center line feature class is acceptable. You can make a route based on whatever data ends up in center line. Um, a word of caution to that is when copying in DGN features, which can be really handy, you have to pay attention to the segmentation of the DGN features uh, and any potential gaps in the features that the person drawing the DGN you know, may not have been aware of, or maybe they didn't care about for their purposes, but for your purposes, that would be important to know about. So that wraps us up for the Create Route Tool. Thanks for watching.